Welcome to Music Diary Group, the hottest podcast for inspirational and gospel entertainment. Featuring undiscovered artists from across the globe. Unlocking the music from hip-hop to rock. We got it. Welcome to Music Diary Group, the hottest podcast for inspirational and gospel entertainment. I'm your host, Sincere on Beats. And I'm your girl, Daisy. D-A-Y-C-E-E, in the place to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's going on today. So today's show is titled Father Figure. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But first, we got to shout out to our sponsor, which is Or Dangerous. Or Dangerous is a brand that uses inspirational merchandise to encourage believers to walk in their victory. We are ordained by God and therefore dangerous to the devil. Right. Yes, we are. You know what I mean? So go check out uh, ordangerous.com and uh, go purchase something inspirational. Get some fly merchandise. Yes, 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 yes. Mm-hmm. So go get that so you can be fly. Yes. Um, so we're going to go into the song of the week. Well, who's the artist of the week? Veronica Day. Ooh, I like the day. She got a song called uh, Better Place, mm-hmm. which is which is perfect for uh, what, what we're going to be about talking today. about. Absolutely. So stay tuned. Be encouraged. Unlocking the music. Children are crying, preventable disease, claiming their lives, taking the husbands and destroying their wives. What are we gonna do? Come on, America, it's time to stop being selfish and ask yourself, what can I do to be of hell? That's Veronica Day with Better Place. Very timely. Very, very timely. timely. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Very timely, man. So um, I love that song. Uh, it gives you something to think about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So uh, with that being said, if you want to send your music, send it to musicdiarygroup at gmail.com and uh, MP3 format and MP3 form. Form. <laughs> MP3 format what? and MP3 four formats Yay. <laughs> is is very welcomed you know if you have a music video send it to us and we'll post it and um that should be it all right please no links no links because links is whew. and we're looking forward to that new music yes definitely so we can uh encourage other people yeah exactly yes so listen today's show <laughs> is called father figure Right? Yes. In honor of Father's Day, which is coming up here shortly in a few days. However, uh, this is not your this is not gonna be your average talk about about the father figure not that you all. think. So let us let us uh uh inspire some thought here today. Yes. Um so we're gonna talk uh, we're gonna start off by talking about violence in the black male, you know, within the black male community. Yes. Um and so, you know, violence towards one another and towards um, other people. Yes, exactly. First off, happy Father's Day yes. to my fathers out there. You know, sometimes we don't uh, get the recognition that we uh, deserve, but it's not about that at the end of the day. It's about you being a great father to to your children and other children. So. Right. Absolutely. And we're about to expand on that father father definition. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. So so how you feeling about and I know you're very passionate about this. So we're gonna give you a little something to think about. How do you feel about the black violence, the level of black black male violence currently? I, I'm gonna say this. So it might seem that I'm coming off angry, a little, you know It's passion. Yeah, this mm-hmm. is all passion. You know, um, because I'm a loving person, you know what I mean, and so if don't get offended if I if I say some words that you're not gonna like, but uh, towards one another, this is not this violence that these young kids is committing 
and not just young kids, it's sad. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hurtful to families, black families everywhere. You know, um, I feel as though there's is it's a lot of it's unnecessary. It's coming from uh just hatred for one another, you know what and I mean, for the next man. I mean And a lack of care for life. Yeah. A lack of yeah. a lack of care for life. Yeah, I'm trying to choose my words carefully because I can go straight forward and it's gonna is I don't, the best way I know how to say things is just to say it. I don't know how to sugarcoat things sometimes. So that's why Daisy, when you hear, she's going to tell me to stop because <laughs> this is going to be a situation that otherwise we'll be here for about an yeah, hour. We'll be here for I mean, this hour. is it's a it's a huge topic. And, and I even feel like we can we can even tackle some of this within another show, too. You okay, know, OK. Yeah. So, um, you know, I know there's been an increase in reporting right. of, of, of black, uh, black on black violence. And, and, you know, because fathers, they were kind of focusing on the black male. Right. Um, of course there's, there's violence in amongst black females as well, but yes. we're kind of focusing on the black male today and you'll understand why, mm -hmm. um, a little later on. But, um, there's been an increase and my thought, you know, my conspiracy theory, you know, about that is, you know, is, is there an increase in in this violence, this black male violence, or is there an increase in in the reporting of it, because of all these of all these movements that's been happening in the past year? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, or you know, do you feel like it's a little bit of both? Yeah, yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, I think it's an increase on reporting it mm -hmm. because they want to make black people look like we're the violent ones, right? You know, um, mm -hmm. but I also do think that there is an increase, but there's also an increase in violence not just in the black community, everywhere, huh? everywhere when yeah. the summer hits. Oh, yeah, that's true. You know, it gets yeah. hot and... Um, people lose their minds. And people get out of prison. You told me that. Yeah, people get, people out, of get out of prison in the prison summer. In the summer. Mm -hmm. You know, if you haven't noticed that, look when people get out of prison. So they let everybody out in the summer. So mm -hmm. cages open in the summer. You know what I mean? Um, that's crazy. I, I, rem yeah. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but but the thing is, you know, there, there's crime. Crime's going to increase over over time when, when things happen in life. You know, we just coming out of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. People have been locked up and feel like there's no hope and they don't care. They, COVID's going to kill them anyway. You know, so they just out there just busting all kinds of shots and mm -hmm. killing everybody, which brings me to street code. Yeah, and I, that's my concern. And I know we were talking about it. And, and of course, that's not my only concern. Yeah. But, you know, I think as a black female... I literally, and I shared this with Sincero Beats, that I had a level of comfort, a little bit of a level of comfort by the fact that I wasn't a black male. I feel mm. like I, I wasn't targeted as much. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because <Cassie. laughs> I wasn't targeted as much. Be, um, she, she is allergic as, to as the bull crap, too. See? <laughs> I wasn't targeted as much as a black man, so I felt some security in that. But these days, you know, street code seems to be out of the window. Yeah, and I'm yeah. looking at I'm concerned at the at the gas station because I'm hearing stories about these young black men um, um, carjacking women with children in the car. Killing kids, uh, more too. More than more than once, you know, taking the kids with the car, dumping the kids later. Um, I'm hearing a lot of stories, you know, about, um, um, senior citizens, um, elderly, our elderly people getting, um, getting, um, robbed right. and carjacked. And I'm like, well, what happened to code? I mean, I did not grow up innocent in a bubble. I right. grew up on the streets of Southern, uh, Southern Cali, Los Angeles around, you know, gang violence. Mm -hmm. And I, and I've never felt this unsafe. Yeah, yeah. And that's saying a lot. You know, and so um, because there was a code, right? There was a code. There was you hit your target. You might not be a very good shot. It was lots of straight bullets, right? Right. In Los Angeles in the nineties, <laughs> but uh, but you're hitting. You're you're gunning for a target. You're not just out here shooting at at will at random, uh, shooting in right. in um, crowds. And, and them just 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 out here just wilding no out for no reason. You know, yeah. back in the day, you know, it's no women, no children. You know what I mean? Um. I, I would say this, mm -hmm. I, and I got to say this first. I seen people get shot, mm -hmm. getting people shot in the head. I seen people get run over by a car. Oh, and this is all on purpose. I seen babies get hit, right? I seen babies get hit by a car. I've seen it, but check this out. I also seen where people was trying to hit their target and then messed around and just murked everybody. But I also seen, which was a street code, 
somebody walked up to somebody and sliced them up, you know what I mean, or shoot them. And we don't condone violence. We don't do that. But we're trying to show you, listen, if you got a problem with somebody, yo, keep that between you and that person. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't need to be in your business, man. No, everybody does not need to. There's civilians and there's street cats. Mm -hmm. Why are you mixing the two? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to mix them two, man. Right. You don't do that. And then, like, how is it, how are we being viewed as a result? Like, because we're talking about the times that we're in. How is this affecting how society is, is viewing us when we're trying to get reform? You know, we're trying to get police reparations reform and for reparations. Mad years. And we're trying to move forward. How right. is this making us look? We're looking like some, some I'm going to be honest with you, some jackasses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we looking like dummies. we looking like coons, like clowns. They're like, ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. They're killing each other. They, you know, let, let them kill each other. You know what I mean? They, they want this and they want that. But look what's going on in these cities. Right. And didn't you say, like, about law enforcement? Because it's like we talk about, we focus on when law enforcement comes in, right, and they're so quick to draw guns and shoot black men specifically. Man. But then it's either they're, <laughs> they're either overly violent or they completely withdraw. Withdrawing and letting you kill each other. And letting you kill and each other. And you know other. what we was talking mm -hmm. about? I seen This is what I've seen. But I've seen this. So... Law enforcement, they say, yo, we let you go. Even though you just murdered two people. But they say, yo, we let you go. But you got to do us a favor. Mm. See them dudes over there? Yo, you got to go hit them. You got to go hit them up. Use your gun. Do whatever you got to do, but go kill them. I've seen that. So they're using us upon And then they let you go. And then you know what they say? Oh, we couldn't find those killers. Mm. Mm -hmm. That killed whoever. Oh, we, we, we couldn't find them. Mm -hmm. Unsolved mystery. I've and, seen that. Wow. You know, all the stuff that goes on, you know, and it continue to mind to blow your mind. You know, we think we've seen everything, but yeah. we haven't. Um, I also wanted to bring up the violence, you know, kind of coming back to the music scene. Okay. Like the violence among rappers oh, in the industry today is mind blowing to me. It is. Because remember when we were, I was saying that. When we were coming up, that's not no form of rap code. Nobody right. was doing that. Nobody was doing that. And I mean, um, the death of the deaths of Biggie and Tupac was, that was a like shocker. that was yeah, it was phenomenal. It was mind blowing yeah. because that didn't happen. Right in you know in that industry, in the hip hop industry, was supposed to kind of save you from the street. Exactly. That's what it was. That's what a lot of rappers attributed it to. Right. You know, it's like, oh, rap saved me. You yeah. know, rap saved me from the street. Um, Biggie and two, and you know that that conversation between P Diddy and uh, Notorious mm -hmm. uh, B.I.G. was, you know, see that the streets are the studio, right? You know, regardless, because it's a whole another issue, you know, in the studio. You know, that's <laughs> that's a whole another show. Right. But like, you know, he said the streets are the studio, and I felt like that was kind of like a way to mentor, you know. That was kind of a route to mentoring right, was right. the music industry. So what the what's what's going on now? Yo, I, I, you're not supposed to mix the two. You know what I mean? Like the whole purpose of getting money and being in the, uh, uh, you know, hip hop and all that. Those cats use that money to get out the game, man. You know, they got new cats now. It just they don't they don't have no mentor, so they don't know. They mix in the two and ended up dying and. Nobody's telling them that, especially if you have a record deal. Nobody's saying, yo, you can't do that. Why? Because you 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 worth more debt. Mm. So check this out. When you worth more debt, okay, you already know who owns the record companies. You already know who owns that, which is a white person. No disrespect to nobody white, but I'm talking to my black people right now. So the black the the the, the black people, the artists, white people getting the money. So you dying, right? They feeding their family off of your death. Mm -hmm. So you think they're gonna stop you? You think they're going to mentor you? No. So there's none. That that just kind of went down no. the toilet. That then. went down the toilet. There's no mentor. I'm like, why is this so common? I ain't never seen that in my life. Yeah, hip hop's Ooh, the only genre killed. that you This rapper dying. got killed. This rapper got every other week. You dying for rap. Really? They rapping you up. <laughs> wow. They no rapping pun you intended. Up. No point intended. They rapping you up, man. Mm-hmm. And, and, and hold on, let me say this, mm -hmm. man. I don't want to judge nobody, you know what I mean, that you cats out there, y'all doing what y'all doing. You're supposed to mess up, you know what I mean, to a certain extent. But there's a difference between making a bad decision and um, a mistake. Mm -hmm. You know you ain't supposed to be out there killing nobody. That's a bad decision. 
You know what I mean? It's a mistake is you driving the, you driving with a car in a car, you know what I'm saying, with a with a blunt or something. Yo, all right, that was a mistake. You know what I mean? I, sh- I ain't, I ain't going to do that no more. You have a chance. Mm-hmm. You know you have a chance. Right. And so, you know, speaking of kind of mentoring, we, we go into kind of, you know, um, the father figure part, you mm-hmm. know, in regards to like mentoring. That's another way to say mentor. Yeah. Um, big up to... What's his name? Uh, Tobe. I can't say yeah, his name. Yeah, Tobe, yeah. Wigway. Yeah. Um, kind of had a song called Father Figure. Yeah. And I'm so your father figure. And but he was talking about mentoring. And so even in the hip hop, just Joe all around. Yeah. See, he married and got children. Mm-hmm. And he's just living that life, yeah. you know. And so you talked about men um who serve time. Like yeah. how can they mentor? Like what what should they be doing? You know, um, first I would like to say this, man. And I'm from the streets, man. I did my dirt, whatever, whatever. Um, the cats that did time, you're responsible for what you left behind. They saw you do what you did. Now they following the same footsteps. And you come out after so long, whatever you did, and you leave. Or you go back to the same area and you just forget about them. But you, you fail to realize those children you raised, because you raised them. You can't get out of that. They saw you. Do your dirt. You raised them. Mm-hmm. You got to go fix that. And like, what can they do to fix it? All right. Some of these cats now, they scared of these young dudes, man. They scared. But what you can do is, if you go to work every day, because when you come home from prison, all right, you, you, <laughs> you flying right. I mean, I don't know too many cats that's out there going back out doing the same thing. Because mm-hmm. you got a lot to lose. So you're going to get a regular job anyway. So mm-hmm. you might as well... You might as well start with a regular job now or before you did that dumb stuff. Or you if call, anything, stay in the house. Stay right? in the house. They can't get a job. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, come on, man. Stay out of trouble. Just stay, stay out, out of trouble. trouble. It could be as simple as just stay out of trouble. Yeah, but what you can <laughs> do is you can work, talk to them cats every day. Yo, what's up, yo, man? What's up, my man? Yo, whatever, how you say it. Yo, what up? Stay out of trouble today. They mm-hmm. might say, yo, F you. They may not even listen, but it's going to be in their head. If you say that every day, whatever, it's going to be in their head. They might be like, dang. It's going to ring a bell when you do something repetitive. Repetitively, that's mm-hmm. how you say it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. how you say it. You said it. Um, when you do that, guess what happens? It plays over like songs. Yeah. It plays over and plays over in the head. And you know what? You don't need a. You don't have to have a father because I hear a lot of people say, you know, I don't have a dad. You know, you have yeah. heard that a lot. I don't have a dad, so ain't nobody there to teach me. Yeah, I see. I hear that all the time. Like they literally, people literally say that. But here's the thing. You don't. There's good in the hood. There's good in the hood. There's good in the hood. Somebody so. in neighborhood is, is, is not, if not one, it's three people in your neighborhood that you see every day. Mm-hmm. They doing good. Yeah. You, I'm not going to let you talk about the hood, talk about you don't see nobody in your hood. Do, no, there's good in the yeah. hood. You, you choose who you look up to. You choose who you look up to. Right. And you, you, know, you took neighbor mm-hmm. out of the hood. Mm-hmm. You go into white areas. You say, oh, this is a nice neighborhood. You, you talk about black. I'm in a hood. Mm-hmm. No, you took neighbor out of the hood, which right. means there's no love. Start. Mm. T- it's time for us to start loving each other, man. Stop killing each other and move forward. Right, right, absolutely. And just real quick, um, there's also the the men, the black males that so called got out. I'm gonna air quote that because you know we all know what that means to get out of the hood. We yeah. we made it out. You know, uh, the Jeffersons. <laughs> we made it out like the Jeffersons. So you got the black men who graduate and go to college on, you know, for academics or sports or however they got in, you know, and they and they, you know, better themselves. Right. And then a lot of times they don't come back. They don't they don't um they don't go back and feed, you know, um, their community, right. you know, and so uh, even if you That's just go back, too. yeah, it is. It can, it can be. It can, there's an absence. There's an absence of that. There's an absence of people coming back and um and giving that. Even yeah. if you go back to your high school and you know speak. Yeah, um, like I, I've been putting boots on the ground for many, many years. You know, I go back and I used to talk to the uh, cats in high school. You know, what I'm saying when they're about to graduate, I let them know about the streets. You know, I I I, I pretty much try to put boots on the ground everywhere. You know, I've tried everything, even even police officer. That's a whole nother situation. <laughs> you know what it. I mean? Try that too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I've been out there. So you can't tell me there's not good everywhere. You know, um, yeah. I just want to stay for, on topic. Even for me that um, have fathers, you, you can still find mentors. You can still find mentors. <laughs> Outside of, you know, because sometimes people's fathers just, you know, don't don't always completely cut the mustard. They're doing the best that they can. Exactly. And so what about pastors? Pastors. 
Yo, I don't see. I'm going to tell you this one example. Me and my father, right? We had a, uh, a meeting with a lot of uh, pastors in Atlanta and the police departments, several police departments, you know what I'm saying? Like captains, uh, sh- uh, uh, c- yeah, captains, detectives, all of them um, um, around the metro Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Me and my father was the only ones that came out there in street clothes. Everybody else came out there in suits, chains and all that, you know, clergy outfits. Streets don't need that, man. They can't relate to that. Mm-hmm. But where are you guys now? Mm-hmm. The, st- the streets need you. Where are right. you? And then you know what? It's a, I always say it's a remnant. You, it, there's usually a remnant. There's a, there's a few. But there's, there's a so few. many pastors everywhere, right? So oh, many on. churches. All so these many churches pastors. that you see on the, in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then when you go in the hood, right? When you go talk to these cats, don't preach to them because that's not what they're looking for. They just need love, man. Mm-hmm. They need guidance from everybody. Right. Come on, man. Right. And so, you know, the takeaway from this, you know, we call it father figure. I wish I could say more. Oh, we no, nah, no, nah, we we can't, you know. Time. Yeah, time. But the takeaway um, is that all black men are father figures. All black men are father figures, meaning that all black men have something to contribute yes. to the generation behind them. Yep. And, and so, you could be a bad father figure, mm-hmm. or you could be a good father figure. But at the end of the day, you a father figure because somebody is looking at you and they're copying you when you think they're not. That's it. That's it. You just hit the nail on the head. <laughs> and with that, um, we are going to have a phone call. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that because I would, yo. <laughs> yes. And we're cool. We're calling. We're going to call my father. Why are we calling your father? Because my father put boots on the ground for many years, man. He, he ain't seen it, man. He, he been locked up mad times, man. Um, he's he been there. And he was, he's, he was out there on the streets, right? Out there on for the streets, years, man. In, in New York. In New York. Out, out on the streets talking to all the young... Drug dealers, gangsters. I mean, mafia. You know, mafia. Mm-hmm. Mafia. So he was just bold with it. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know what? They respected my father. You know what I mean? They respected him and um because of what he stood for. They called him um Reverend Wright. So hold on. Let's, let's get to him. See if he answered the phone. You know, he an old man right now. <laughs> he real old. He got a lot to say. Yeah, so you gonna ask gone. him a question? <laughs> yeah. I'll ask. Hello. Hello. Yo, Hi. what's up, pops? How you doing? Okay. How you doing? All right. You live on air right now. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Hey, we're gonna be brief. We're gonna give a quick little um, ask you a quick little you. question if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. What is your experience? I know this is a lot, but just if you could just kind of wrap it up a little bit. Uh, what is your experience with mentoring young black men and young black males? Yeah, like what did you encounter? Like, you know, how did it how did it go? What did you see? Well, it, it went well, you know, uh, when you're dealing with young kids, and uh, especially in our race, uh, and men, we find out, you know, what I have found out is that uh, they, we as men, black men, are, we have issues that we have to solve within ourselves and that in order to our, to help our kids. Mm-hmm. So you're saying pretty much like, you know, if, um, and this is what I'm just speculating. So if your father did something to you, right, you mad, you mad that your father mm-hmm. wasn't there for you, so you ended up acting like a, a jerk or you were on drugs or something, and then or that just carries making poor on. decisions. Poor decisions, right? Yes, because see, mothers can only be a mother, but they can't be a father to their male. I agree with that. Uh, to the black male, I agree with that. So if there's no dad in the, in the, um, in the house. You know, and for, matter of fact, you did have dad in the house, but that doesn't mean that he's accountable. Wow. Great you know? point. Mm-hmm. Great point. Uh, they can, uh, the, the male can go to work, you know, and provide for a the house, but he's only a provider. But he doesn't, if he doesn't go beyond that, then with, uh, especially when you have young boys, mm-hmm. uh, then he, you know, there's nothing for that those boys to indulge. You know, us becoming a young man. Okay. To you know, a young man because 
they were not taught to because dad was seen, but he wasn't. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't he there. He was an actor. Okay. Wow. Well, he thank you. Active in their lives. Right. Well, thank you for that, man. I appreciate that. Um, you know, we getting ready to wrap it up. So, thank you for that. Thank you. You know, I, I, I'll call you yeah. later. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Love you guys. All right. Love you too. So that was my father, man. I seen him get locked up. You know what I mean? I seen him one time, real quick, because yo, we 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 passed twenty five minutes, but mm-hmm. I seen him, man, uh, help somebody. These cats on the block. They were stabbing each other with the machetes, man. You know, bleeding. You know, boom, 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 man. And, you know, that running down a fire escape, mm-hmm. stabbing dude. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, chopping him up. So he was getting My locked- father was up there running, you know, trying to split that up, yo. You're getting locked up trying to help people. Trying to get, yeah, yo, yeah, listen, good man. trouble. Good trouble. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. But the moral of the story is, man, I love I love the black community, man. Um, We love you. Um, I want to embrace you, you know, young, young brothers and older cats, man. Yo, if you using that, activating that pistol, because it, it's... It, it's no more fighting no more. You're activating the pistol. If you're doing that, just know there's consequences and you're selfish. And, you know, for all of you in a, in a place to be a father figure, you don't have to have um, a child. You don't have right. to have birthed a child. You know what I mean? You can, you are a father figure. Yes. And so embrace that uh, during this Father's Day, whether you're a, a physical father or not. Yes. You are somebody's father figure. Exactly. I have a lot of kids. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Biologically. And spiritually, spiritually, yeah. yeah. I raised a lot of children, yo. Yes. So, um, okay. But that wraps it up, man. You know, I love everybody in, the, in our black community, man. I love people, but um, yo, we gotta do better, yo. If y'all out there, you know, young cats, you out there thinking about harming the next man, yo, it's not worth it. All right, we mm-hmm. love you. If nobody told you that we love, they loved you. Remember, we, we do. do. Unlocking, Unlocking the music. The music. Yeah. Now I know to the world, the rap I kick will make you think I'm a lunatic. Lost my mind, I'm mentally sick. Uh-huh. But for all mankind, this is it. New kingdom on the earth where the devil don't fit. No more bad times and no more wars. New Jerusalem, the city with the gold on the floor. Righteous laws, a thousand year pause, the earth rejuvenated, Christ illuminated. I fight for the cause, kick down doors, the devil set up, and I'm about to erupt. Max the warrior, I wear the armor of God. Fix your face, raise the base, and stop looking so hard. You see, praising the Lord is easy for me. Greg Max, right there, he's supposed to be. You're not close to me, you're supposed to be.